Welcome to the Cooking with Jerry show. Well, you know, I'm really not the barefoot Contessa or Paula Dean, but I have something to show you today. It's advanced culinary tips. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a peanut butter and blueberry jam sandwich. You might be wondering why we're having a class on making a peanut butter and jam sandwich in a digital media course. Well, let me tell you a little story. A long time ago, perhaps before you were born, I used to teach a class at UCLA to people who wanted to become career and technology educators. Now these folks were people like cosmetologists, people like plumbers and electricians, masons, those kinds of folks that wanted to teach in community college and career centers. And they had to take a course in learning how to teach. And one of the biggest problems that these folks had is that they knew so much about their field that when they started teaching, they would speak over the heads of their students using terminology that the students didn't know, etc. So I needed to teach them how to start from the beginning. When you teach, you begin at the beginning and you end at the end. It sounds pretty simple. But they never began at the beginning. They began in the middle somewhere. So I had to teach them how to organize things from the beginning to the end. And so what I did is I had them do an imaginary assignment well, it wasn't really an imaginary assignment, but it was a, a project that they had to do. And they had to make an instruction sheet, a step-by-step -step instruction sheet, for making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now, the problem is, is that I told them that this person that you are teaching is a Martian and has never seen peanut butter and never seen jam before. So the point that they had to get across is that they had to explain every single little thing as it was going along. What's a knife? What's peanut butter? What's jam? What's bread? Over the years, I had my students do this many, many times, and I started to notice some trends. One thing is, is that the men and the women in my classes tended to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in far different manners. In one case, the guys would take a slice of bread, dig some peanut butter out of the, of the container, and spread it on a slice of bread. Then, without cleaning the knife or anything, they would dig the knife into the, into the jelly and smear it on top, of the, on top of the peanut butter, take another slice of bread, and close it. On the other hand, the women tended to put the peanut butter on one slice of bread and then uh, put the jam on the other, making sure that they cleaned the knife in between the two steps. After they were done, the women would take the two slices, one with peanut butter, one with jelly, and put it together. Now you women might be thinking, ooh, those guys made an awful mess. But you know what? In reality, they didn't. And as I was thinking about why, the thought struck me that the process of making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is exactly the same as printing on a multicolor printing press. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn about printing in color on a multiple color printing press by making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. We'll start with a slice of bread. Okay. Now let's do it the guy's way. All right. We'll take the peanut butter, dig some out, and spread it onto the, onto the uh, bread. The bread, in this case, represents the, uh, the paper, the substrate that we're printing on. Now, have you ever had the case where the bread starts crumbling, the peanut butter actually digs chunks of, of the um, bread out, makes a mess, kind of crumbly sort of mess? Well, that is a problem that occurs in printing as well. Now, you know, like I said, the women would clean this knife but I'm, I'm a guy, so I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it directly into the jam and dig out some jam and put it on top of the peanut butter. Now notice that it, it lays there just fine. The peanut butter draws the jelly to it and the jam just sits there on top. All right, let's try it the other way. By the way, I'll show you a close-up that there's no peanut butter in the jelly. None. It's completely clean. 
All right, let's try the opposite direction. Let's put some, and notice I haven't cleaned the, peanut, the, the, the knife at all. all right, I'm going to put the bread on here. Um, so we're going to put the jelly on the bread and spread it around. And then there's a little bit of, of jelly on here. And I'm going to dig into the peanut butter. I want you to notice that the peanut butter has a little bit of jelly on it there. All right? So I'm going to try to put this peanut butter on top of the jam. And you see, it doesn't stick. In fact, the peanut butter is taking the jelly off of the bread. Now, that's a real interesting thing. It doesn't work, does it? It doesn't stick. So what does that mean? When we're dealing with, with printing on a multicolor press, you're going to have four colors of ink. Typically, they are black, cyan, magenta, and yellow, KCMY. Now, in the case of this first example, what I did is I had a piece of paper, a substrate, a slice of bread, and I put the more sticky substance on it. Now, in ink, the stickiness is called tack, T-A-C-K. So I put the more tacky substance on the bread first, and then on top of that, I put the less tacky. In this case, I put the less tacky on first and then tried to put the more tacky on top of it. And what did it do? The peanut butter took the jelly off of the bread. The same thing happens with ink. So with printing inks, every ink has a specific amount of tack or stickiness. And these um, stickiness levels are defined according to an arbitrary system of numbering. And what happens is there is a, a certain ink that is put onto a machine that is called an inkometer. That's I-N-K-O-M-E-T-E-R. No, it's not a tachometer, guys. Tachometers are the devices that tell you how fast your engine is running. It has nothing to do with, uh, with ink tack. No, this inkometer is a machine that uh, has some rollers on it, sort of like a very small printing press. And when you turn this machine on and put some ink on it, the machine slows down. The more it slows down, the more tacky the ink is, and the higher the number. So if the machine show, uh, slows down a lot, that means it will have a high tack number. If it slows down just a little bit, it will have a low tack number. In the case of our uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, the peanut butter has a higher tack number than the jelly does. In the same way, when printing on a press, the first color ink has to have a higher tack number, the second color has to have a lower, third lower, and fourth lower still. That way, each time the uh, press prints an image onto the paper, the image that is currently on the paper will pull the ink towards it, just like the peanut butter pulled the jam towards the bread. So we have this sticky, less sticky, less sticky, less sticky. Now in the case of a sheet-fed press, these numbers that come from the inkometer are typically in the series 16, 14, 12, 10. So these numbers, again, are arbitrary. They don't mean miles per gallon or whatever. They're just an arbitrary number that this machine called an inkometer reads when the stickiness level causes the machine to slow down. So a sheet-fed press typically has a sequence of inks at 16, 14, 12, 10. A web press, because it runs much faster, has a lower sequence, something in the neighborhood of, of 12, 11, 10, 9, something in that neighborhood. So what does this mean to you? Is if you have a K ink, it's that it has an uh, inkometer number or a tack number of, of 16, you cannot put that on the second color tower of a printing press. You have to put the most sticky ink in the first tower. Okay? So that's really about all I wanted to show you. You have to understand that the stickiness of peanut butter and jelly is really the exact same thing as the stickiness of ink. When putting ink on paper, the stickiest ink goes first, less sticky, less sticky, less sticky. Um, in the same way, when putting peanut butter and jelly on bread, the 
most sticky substance goes on first, then the less sticky substance. It works. Thanks for watching.